Hello, and welcome to the Digital North. Each week we get together and we discuss a movie, an album, or a documentary, and dig into the themes, style, context, and content of that work to try and understand what makes it special. With any luck, we come away from the conversation with a deeper appreciation for the work and a fresh perspective. And so, without further ado, I bring you today's episode. Welcome to the Digital North. This week we'll be talking about Heartworms by the Shins. And today we have David Nielsen. It's snowing in Seattle. Thomas Harms. <laughs> Hello there, folks. Myself, Ryan Hamilton. And Jonathan Tompkins. A blast. A blast. And Jonathan, you're the one who chose Heartworms. Uh, this mm-hmm. week, so why don't you why don't you take it from here and tell us why you chose Heartworms and uh, what you got out of it? What do you see in this? Mhm, mhm. <clears throat> I chose it because I just wanted to share it with you guys. I thought it was a very, very well done piece of art, and I thought it would be nice to talk to somebody about it. I don't have many uh, Shins fans uh, or people that that I could really talk to about it at work and stuff like that that's kind of why i picked it um want to hear other people's perspectives uh because i got my own thing that i'm listening to with, as a trained musician and all that stuff i just wanted to bring it down and, and do a few albums here coming up here and, and then a few times uh in the future let's talk about some music yeah yeah for sure <clears throat> well i was super excited when i saw that you had the shins because i don't know if you remember but the first time i heard the shins was actually in your room where you're sitting right now you played phantom yeah. limb and uh we saw the music video for phantom limb and that was the first time i actually heard the shins and since then i've been a massive fan for i don't know the last what seven or eight years so it's and been... ryan i think you might have introduced me to the shins too yeah. kind of in a not like a i probably yeah. had heard them before but i think you put them on a mix CD or something. Aw. That's cute. And I, I listen to it a lot. It is. Right on. Cool, man. And now cool. we're married. Yeah. Oh, my that's God. True. And we've been guys happy kiss? for a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Super yeah. <alpha. laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Thomas, what do you think about it? Well... I enjoyed the album immensely. I was a big Shins fan before this album. Uh, Really got into Broken Bells the last two years and have been listening to Mm -hmm. them a lot. So I guess big James Mercer fan in general. Mm -hmm. And a few of the songs really did remind me of a Broken Bells album. And then there were also a few that were definitively Shins style. So I liked that he kind of mixed the two. He had the uh, very electronic DJ uh, backing. And he also went back to the acoustic for a song or two that I really enjoyed. So it's cool that he blended those styles. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. One of the songs that he went back to kind of an acoustic thing, Mildenhall, Mm. that I just Mm -hmm. haven't stopped listening to it since yesterday. It's such a good song. The Fear as well, the final song, Mm -hmm. is also that style. And I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. And the fear seems like it was in pretty classic Shins style because the Shins yeah. usually end an album with like a like a capstone song, which I think is kind of the idea for the album. <clears throat> and so, like when I think of like "Wincing the Night Away," I think of um, yes, what the last song from "Wincing the Night Away" was. Um, yeah, I'll, you think of the name? I, I can't remember. I can't oh, remember man. either. I remember the, the tune head. and I remember the song very well, but oh, I got you. I got you. I got All you. Right. Go to but, artist, but it's just classic. Um, a shins. comet appears. A comet appears. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite songs from that album. <clears throat> Definitely. Yeah. Great song. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it seems like that's what the fear was about too, because it was about his anxiety for like the his decision to become an artist and kind of um, like not really being confident. That, mm-hmm. that was the right decision or not being confident in his work so it, it goes hand in hand <clears throat> with 
the capstone songs that the shins tend to have. Mm -hmm. I wrote out those just couple of little pointers, maybe like discussion pointers when I posted the, the album, um, don't have those immediately available and I don't think it's sure. important to, to talk about them necessarily but one of the things that happened in the album that was really cool is, is that stuff where there's the, like Ryan's talking about the capstone at the end but um, you know Milden Hall uh, that's also about decision to become an artist or, or maybe not a decision but an experience in the life uh, of James Mercer or somebody else it doesn't have to be him uh, that was kind of part of the, the soul of this album. Um, a little bit of discovery going on there, a little bit of sharing kind of weaved in between there, a little thread. Um, <clears throat> just to lay out a little bit, I think, how we want to talk about it. Um, I'm going to – we're going to like just go through a few like s specified little topics like well, what did you think literally just about like – album as a whole favorite song why was your favorite song and then i think we can just go down the list of songs and be like so uh this song what do we think and we can all just give our a little bit of feeling about it and i think at the end some uh some retrospection on the experience mm. all right on the experience how about we pick a favorite each yeah talk about that one but i can start with milden hall because mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that it, it was my favorite already. But I'm really into, I play guitar mostly finger style, which is finger style. probably what they, yeah. <laughs> but I had a girlfriend in college of, that taught me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mostly because of the interview. Was he hot? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty alpha. <laughs> that works in some way. <laughs> Anyways, um... I looked into a little bit about the song. So, uh, Milden Hall, mm -hmm. he says it's an RAF base. It's mostly like an American base. Mm -hmm. um, and he was born in Hawaii, so he traveled around everywhere. And the story is about how he basically got into music. And uh, the kid in class handed me a tape. The band was the jesus and mary chain i want to say uh oh, no i was kidding. just listening to them and i never heard of the band before but i i think that the shins are definitely influenced by them because they're a scottish band oh and they have a lot of the same i, I don't know you'll have to i'm not i don't know enough about music to call out the specific things about it but all right you ought to listen to it jonathan and i'm sure you'll <clears throat> see the same i would love to yeah they're they're um on spotify the most listened to song mm -hmm. is really good something honey or or, or something like that but it's i definitely see that jesus the jesus uh, and mary chain the jesus and mary chain yes i don't okay. know i don't understand sweet the, uh, just like honey is there uh, Jesus. Probably single. Nice. Oh, okay. So that's that's right a good um, little tidbit there. That's the good kind of stuff uh, that. Yeah. So it starts off with like a a pulsing bass drum, <clears throat> and then comes in with this, mm -hmm. bed, like really, kind of almost raunchy but spacey electric guitar, and then like a a spacey vocal behind it that reminds me of the shins a lot and they yeah. change pieces. they like they take out instruments and they put them back in and things like that like the this album in particular of the shins i was like how would you play this live there are so many effects mm. and instruments mm. that are jumping in and out and i also see this in that band that they mentioned in that song so what about uh milden hall did you like specifically uh how it was i i suppose kind of how it was consistent and it wasn't like i expected what was coming next and there wasn't as much of the different instruments dropping out and popping back in 
and the mood was pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. And it was mostly just acoustic guitar, single notes, not strumming. And that's what I'm into. I'm a huge Simon and Garfunkel fan. So it, it really just, um, it was something that I, I enjoy generally. And also it's a good song. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I brought up, I brought up a few of those little points that I had written out uh, when when I picked the album, and the three things that I wanted to take a look at was place and sounds and also just some stories. Spa- place, sounds, and story. And it's really – I really like what you said because you hit on a couple of those things. Uh, one of the things I asked is, is you know, where, where are we? Where's the song? Um, where are we supposed to be as the audience? Um, and one of the questions I had, now it's under place and under sounds. I said, you know, what were the, what were the shins listening to? What, what did they want to share with us? And you totally nail that stuff The Jesus and Mary, chain. Jesus, and Mary chain. Um, you know, that's something that he was sharing. That's something that, uh, he was listening to. And we found out we found out where we were for that song. It was a military base in Hawaii. The base was in Hawaii. No, um, in England. England. He was in born England. Okay, he's why at a military from... base. But yeah, okay. Which in also, England. Okay. I've been wondering about James Mercer's accent since I began listening to the Shins because it's a really strange accent. It's it's not mm-hmm. it's not what many of the British dialects sound like, and it's not American. Do you mean? Like his singing accent, the way he sings, or like interviews and things like both. that, because usually those are both okay. Both. He's he's got kind of a weird he's got a weird way of speaking, but um, yeah. it, I I didn't know anything about his life at all, pretty much, mm-hmm. um, until listening to this album. And this album was really personal in a lot of ways. And, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I guess Milvin Hall is a really good example of that because I I knew nothing about his personal life, and it wasn't until I dug into the album Heartworms that I was learning that the Shins are James Mercer. And I didn't know that their first album that they recorded, I think it was O Inverted World, was the last time that James recorded a Shins album alone and like as the, the complete creative um, mm-hmm. director of the entire album. Um, because, I mean, I know the Shins from mostly like Shoots Too Narrow, and Wincing the Night Away, and so I know them as like, mm-hmm. that fun little poppy indie band. And then, mm-hmm. um, the like, I remember after, after Danger Mouse, him coming back to Port of Morrow for the Shins, he had a completely different lineup, and the people who he was um, in the photo shoots of Port of Morrow with were actually just a traveling band, and they didn't really have any of the creative yeah. oversight uh, of the album at all he just he mm-hmm. just chose to include them and in mm-hmm. a lot of the photo shoots and so it was it was nice to listen to heartworms and know that this is a it's a, it's a james mercer album you know like it, it's under the moniker the shins mm-hmm. but the shins mm-hmm. are james mercer so it makes sense that this album is mm-hmm. a lot more personal than some of the other ones i didn't realize that uh was the case with port of morrow either mm. um and I think I actually was reading up on Wikipedia a little bit there, and uh, James Mercer cited uh, the kind of removal of the stand of all essentially the band members that had been there for Shoots Too Narrow, O, o Inverted World, and Shoots Too Narrow um, uh, as a, a kind of just a direction change, uh, just a different a different sound. Um, I can find the actual quote that was pretty that was pretty cool the i read into it i didn't certainly didn't see anything as deep as what you're talking about but um Mm -hmm. there was a just a quick blurb written by somebody that said he um got it you still there you have uh, sorry man we lost you for a second yeah you've cut out Right. Well, while well, while that dead. recovers. Okay. Um, okay. When David left, the recording stopped, so I just had to pick it up oh, again. That's oh, that's okay. No, no problem. Did Did you catch anything of what I said? <laughs> no, man, you died. It was maybe you, five. Yeah. 
for 10 seconds. So, uh, um, yeah, I was just saying what, what the thing that I read said, uh, it was a, it seemed like an appearance choice or something like that. I don't know. It, it wasn't a quote, but the, he, what it implied and what I got out of it was that it was sort of a style of performing the, the appearance of their performance and he wanted to shift away from whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I looked up. Maybe that, maybe that's totally wrong. I'm sure you know more than I do. No, no. I, all I, I just looked up a little bit after I listened to the album. I think I said this when we did, um, Black Star, David Bowie's, uh, album Bowie. that I don't, that's how they said it. I, I was in Scotland for six months studying really? and everyone says David Bowie there. Isn't that weird? But he's from England. So. Yeah, so I guess that's... Amazing. How did the English people say it? I mean, they screw up the English language. Every so. <laughs> they screw true. up Americans they got it right. They say we trousers instead of pants. I was saying that I, I don't do a ton of digging most of the time. For Black Star, that was one of the very few times that I'm reading like bios and interviews and stuff like that. But all I did is just take a quick peek, and apparently uh, the quoted the quote from James Mercer was that uh, disbanding the original lineup, like kind of leaving out the original lineup of musicians, was quote an aesthetic choice unquote. So aesthetic. I think that was that the word is that... exactly in the vein of what yeah. you were also, talking about. Um, I read a Rolling Stones article about Heartworms, and uh, they had mentioned that one of the former band members was convicted of domestic assault, and that was one of the reasons why James kind of mm. uh, decided to clean shop a little bit and um, and remove them mm. from the lineup because he didn't want mm. to taint his kind of like sensitive, you know, heartbroken like yeah very very beta uh, uh, you know type of attitude that he has. Mm -hmm. I'd also read in this in the Wikipedia article that uh, he um, when when he originally he uh, kind of became well known and all that kind of stuff, uh, getting you know popularity because one of the songs from I think it was O Inverted World was featured on a pretty famous movie or, or a, a, you know a box office movie and that kind of helped launch. Oh, are you um, I think it was about, uh, Garden Garden State. Yeah, Garden State. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. What, they they talk what about the shins the in Garden State, and Z in fact, Zach Braff's yeah. character oh, says really? like the shins are the best band ever. So it was great. Nice. For them. Yeah. This the song New Slang. Yeah. Is in that movie, and apparently that helped a lot. And James Mercer was talking about how um, it kind of taught him being a musician full time and, and like quitting his his job and stuff like that taught him uh like how to get outside and make friends because <laughs> he wasn't that's that's not what he's like and it, it definitely comes across in mildenhall that that aesthetic you know uh -huh. and a choice you know, obviously concerned with aesthetic uh that feels like the aesthetic and it feels like a thread i think from all the way from oh inverted world all the way to now that kind of stuff Mm. And I, I would I, I would contend that it's 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 only grown too like it's only become more pronounced this this feeling of him being like this introverted um, good guy who's just got so much anxiety and you know right, he means know. well <laughs> like and like I think that's yeah. something that's really grown with his albums it's and mm -hmm. yeah I guess it probably is an aesthetic choice as much as it is a you know honest realization of what his uh, personality is. Ryan, did you have a favorite track yeah. on the album? Well, Milvin Hall was very high on my list. Or a couple of Um So what I have been bumping lately is um, Cherry Hearts. is something mm. that has caught my attention in the last couple of days because I've listened to this album, I don't know, like a dozen times. Um, oh, wow. I... Mm -hmm. What, what I was really struck by is that, and I'm not sure if this is true, but my feeling is that other Shin's albums tend to be a little more homogeneous. They, they, they tend they tend to have a, pretty much a consistent 
sound not only throughout the album but throughout each song and i thought that something that was new for heartworms is that he would almost have a little intro riff uh an intro Mm -hmm. which was kind of different than the rhythm and the melody of the Mm -hmm. portion of Mm -hmm. the song and Mm -hmm. so it it was strange because i i realized that i really liked some of the hooks in cherry hearts where it's like you kissed me once when when we we were were drunk drunk. (laughs) spinning on my heels and i thought like i don't know like i i'm a i'm a I'm a softy for for music like that, and so I really enjoyed that. But then wow. when I went back looking for that song, it began with such a different noise than what I was expecting that song to yes. begin with. And yes. I think that's a really interesting evolution of the Shins in that, like, not only mm. does he have a little more variation from song to song, but he has more variation within the songs, which I don't think James Mercer has done to the same degree before. Thomas was talking about uh, how um, Broken Bells, you know, big fan of Broke, you're a big fan of Broken Bells, right, Thomas? Yes, sir. Hey, okay. I think that that um, is a great point, Ryan, the evolution, because Broken Bells, because um, I've listened to that, to those, uh, those two albums in the, in the EP um, a lot. Broken Bells actually does a lot of changing within one track. It's there's a lot of definitely of dynamic fluidity in between songs. Yeah. My I, the first person to point that out to me was actually my mom because I gave her uh, the first <laughs> album, Jody. Marin, not Marin Fields, the the first one. And I was like, Mom, what'd you think? She's like, I couldn't follow it. It you know, too much <laughs> happened, and I was like, that sounds, yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. My dad introduced me to Broken Bells, believe it or not. Wow, cool dad. You got Some, cool dad. I, also, to be honest, most Did of my favorite he also hit you a big bands. Ziploc bag full of condoms? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was condoms and acid and, and stuff like that. Go, son. <laughs> Have a good weekend, son. And the keys in the car. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. a joke. He would not give you the keys to the car. I remember. <laughs> I remember how difficult As it was to get you to drive anywhere in high school. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, so coming back to this album after the, you know, because we experience life in the third dimension, so time is not controllable to us. So, not having yet. had some time happen to James Mercer. Um, going and doing Broken Bells and then doing The Shins and then doing Broken Bells doing The Shins. I think some of that Broken Bells mentality of um, not needing that homogeneous uh, song and some experience already on the Broken Bells uh, products, I'll call them songs, products, um, <laughs> where that, that was a thing. I think there was a lot of blend that happened, and I think that would be a good thing to take us a, a tiny peek at for all the songs um, when, when we're talking about our favorites. Yeah. Because uh, I, th- it's kind of like post Broken Bells and and pre Broken Bells almost. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you can you can really see that difference in Port of Morrow in that like Port of Morrow seemed, I, I don't know, it seemed almost like he was trying to emulate um, Danger Mouse's sound and just bring it to the shins. And I, what I really liked about Heartworms is that he had a lot of variation in the instrumentation that he was using. So as David was saying, I mean, like each track will not just have, you know, drums and guitar and vocals, but it'll, it'll have little effects, which really create some texture and layering that the shins didn't traditionally have, especially in the first two albums. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Agreed. Agreed on on all counts. I think that's that's a really great point, and that's a few of the things that I was going to point out um, in in uh, a few of these tracks. I mean, I don't think it's necessary to to go and, and kind of chew out every single track what happened in there. Even though I considered actually going through and being like, and, and saying, you know, okay, this one's 32 bar song form, and and this one uses SRDC, and I'll touch. On a few of those things, I think that give uh, the overall. Oh, we lost him. That's okay. He'll, he'll, <laughs> give... he'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be back. It gives kind of uh, an, an overall vibe, um, digestible yeah. version. Because I don't know um, what that means. So... 
I don't know what those words that you just said mean. Exactly. We're going to talk a little bit about those once we go through our favorite songs uh, and stuff because that's I think that's been a great way to talk about. I do too. A little bit. So, Ryan, you really liked Mildenhall and you really liked Cherry Hearts. And um, I really liked Half a Million and Heartworms. Half- Ah, uh, yeah, heart. Is okay, dead. that's half the album right there. You can't do that. And that is. Alive. <laughs> Ryan, <you're laughs> right. We're I did not, paying not you care right. for Fantasy Island too much, though. So we really? Can... That was my jam. <laughs> I liked Fantasy <laughs> Island. Fantasy Island. Too soft. Yeah. Too soft. <clears throat> okay, you too alpha. Yeah, I think I am too alpha <laughs> for that. Well, like, okay, so the way I evaluate most of my indie rock music is, can I bump this in the hood, and do I gain cred from doing it? And okay. Fantasy Island, I don't. Yeah, because, I mean, the boys the boys in the hood in Norway are pretty, I mean, they're like, they're not Drake, but they're just, like, almost Drake. They're right? jamming the shins. Yeah. Wait, wait, jamming wait, the sh- Drake, was that your example of like a hardcore rapper or like a, a gangster like <laughs> oh, someone who gives you I think it was. No. someone someone with lots of expensive cars and ex- and lots of of nice things that could literally put a piece of poop in an album <laughs> cd crystal case and then like sell it for 15 dollars. not saying his music's bad but well, he music could kind of bad. Funny. i mean so, what's the, on the latest album a lot of that isn't his music it's just somebody else doing well, a track. I mean, do you mean in that if you're gonna he say didn't that, write Taylor the songs? Swift, because he definitely did not write most of the songs that he's performed in his life. Yep. So. Um. Yeah. No. It, I agree that that's a, It's just not a departure from his previous work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In that way. So no, Norway Coming is not back. like Norway is not like a Drake album. <laughs> it's more like a Iron Maiden <laughs> album. And no one's like, really? yeah. yeah, black metal's uh, huge I, I there, right? I don't it's pretty big. It. Black. Yeah, black metal's huge. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Well, most most of the people here are white, but black metal is, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's there. It's around. It's black. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hammer oh, fall. Water <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard some crazy stuff about, like, death metal and, and shit, shit like that in Scandinavia. A lot of There's, like, people in bands that, like, murder people they like it's like oh yeah that guy that singer that band yeah he killed somebody mm-hmm. true right ryan i can't kill somebody I can't, I can't speak to that however the maximum prison sentence yeah. you can have in norway is 20 years so um you know really? you could murder someone and then come out and have a successful music career so possibly that sounds like a true. pretty good deal hmm uh, mm-hmm. So, sorry, what were we talking about before? Uh, you were not a big fan of Fantasy oh, Island, yes. a little too soft, and then we got into the black metal and Drake and <laughs> it does not go hard enough. Killing, people killing people. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Thomas, All right, what, now, what uh, were some tracks that you really like, Thomas? I want to I hear your opinion on this. And I also, uh, along with you, I really enjoyed Half a Million. And I think my favorite one had to be The Fear. And mm. just talking about the album as a whole, and I guess specifically those songs as well, I like that the Shins have kept up with their very self-aware lyrics, and that he always kind of delivers them in such a nonchalant and silky smooth way, no matter what like kind of instrumentation is backing up his vocals. It's kind of always that. It's always James Mercer. And uh, just looking at the lyrics for Half a Million, like he can go through so many, uh, I guess, metaphor and allegory and still have his message in the songs be very clear. So it's just his uh, style of delivery is uh, awesome in this album and over all of the Shins albums as a whole. I love his self-aware lyrics. Yeah. Um, I also really enjoyed Fantasy Island, so screw you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I, I second. I can't I can't yes. be hard if there aren't soft people in the world, so I appreciate you guys. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that just sounded one. like you like fat chicks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it hard. I don't know how you can misconstrue it. Hard. Cushion for <laughs> <laughs> in the world. 
Oh, I know. Exactly. Okay, I just got that. I just. Hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my little my little rubric here, my yeah. little rubric. Um, you're talking about story, what's being said. Um, you, we we have already established there is a connection between the songs. There is something that's being said on the entire album. When it comes to you like you said you like the delivery um, of it. Is that is that the sound that you're getting that that gives you more insight into what's happening? than just the words like if you know yeah. uh, fantasy island it feels it feels like fantasy island there's like mm -hmm. like trick down yeah, and you know some stuff like that what um what about the sounds or or just the <clears throat> could be tempo could be the sounds how much I would say it it mm -hmm. has to do with the I like how you brought up the fantasy island cuz that's a perfect example of the blending of the delivery of the vocals and the mix, how that mixes with the instrumentation, because it, it kind of gives you that feeling of uh, this whimsical island that he's rushing off to. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's one of the songs that reminded me of the Broken Bell style, where it's the instrumentation just as much as his vocals, where some of the older Shins albums, um, how David brought up, it's the finger picking guitar, kind of simpler style, simpler in instrumentation. And when he kind of expands that, he can definitely create more of a, a feeling or an atmosphere with the songs. And I feel like he definitely did that with Fantasy Island and a few of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to see how <laughs> his musical style has progressed in that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I agree. And I think building building upon him not only transitioning to different sounds, um, he has a really improved vocal range from the first – Shin's album. I mean, like, like in what is it? Dead Alive. His his no yeah. sorry, half a half a million half a million mm -hmm. singing falsetto. It is really reminiscent for me of like Passion Pit. Like I feel like that could have almost mm. been a Passion Pit song, in that it was just like super bright and super energetic. Yeah. And I was super <laughs> impressed with how much James Mercer is able to have variation in his vocals mm -hmm. throughout a song. He never used to do that. I don't think. And it, I, I, I agree. I agree. Not as much. And in Milden Hall, he gets all the way down to like a low, you know, A, like A2 or something like that, you know, way down on the left on the piano. He's like, I can still see the glow. And he's all the way down there. And he sounds great. Yeah. Why haven't we heard that before? Uh, Man, that was. He's been working on it. You know? Like, yeah. I feel like, feel, feel like he got the. The, the swine flu just to sing that song, right? <laughs> <laughs> that reference is a few years old. Right? <laughs> what was that, David? Yeah. That reference is a few swine flu. What year was that? That is like 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. H1N1? H1N1. And H1Z1? <laughs> Yeah, Some more really which nobody talks about. See, I thought that should have got a lot more recognition. The H one Z one. All right, H one Z one. Let's, let's, let's not let's not do this. Fuck off, David. Okay. Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> Thomas, what was your least favorite song? Hey, we didn't talk about my favorite song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's let John go first because I, I actually don't know yet. Okay. You don't know yet. Jump well, in. David, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to go now. Spontaneity is the heart of creativity. Well, that was Thomas, that not David. <laughs> Wait, David, did you already tell us? Yeah, I did. Milden Hall. That was the first. It was I never Thomas seen who you. was just speaking, Jonathan. Never seen you, yeah. people. <laughs> okay, Thomas. Thomas, you gotta go. Uh, just <laughs> insert insert my quote from t 15 seconds ago. All right, done. Uh, what was your favorite song, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on. <laughs> That's it. That was evident. <clears throat> My favorite song is Painting a Hole. Dug it. Because... Really dug it. There is so much happening there that I, that made me, like, I was I listened in my car most of the time when I was listening to this, and I was, I'd, like, wake up my phone and be like, Who, who's playing this song, man? What? Got it on shuffle or something. I'm like, oh, no, that's on the album. Yeah. Uh, you know? Um, I thought that was awesome. Like, boom, 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 boom. Like, that's not the shins, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it bumps pretty hard. Yeah. Made a, made a playlist. 
it would have that and then passion fruit right after. Mm. On... <laughs> and then Drake um, coming third. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> uh, James, James and Drake. Yeah. Friends for number four, Evar. Um, painting a hole was awesome. There was some really fun stuff that happened music theory wise that really set me off, and I was like, oh. <laughs> mm, it was Neapolitan chords at the end. Um, I really – I just like the soundscape. I really like the soundscape. I'm all about that soundscape stuff where what sounds are happening? Where are those sounds from? Where are we? Where are we going? I, I love that. And this was like a, a southwestern uh, la, you know, Latino, Latina, Latin, uh, Hispanic hmm. vibe. Uh, the band – was formed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yes, they were. And as soon as I learned that, I, I kind of listened for that Southwestern stuff because it's all all over the shins. Hmm. Um, I I don't know actually how long the band was in Albuquerque. Uh, it was a while, I suppose. I don't know if that's where the influence was is while playing and, and writing in Albuquerque or if that was simply uh, one of James Mercer's or somebody else doing some of the writing with him, uh, something that was uh, why they wanted to make music. They wanted to make that kind of music. Um, go back to one of their early albums, you know, like uh, on O Inverted World, um, there's there's a lot of – actually, I think even more on Shoots Too Narrow, um, there's a lot of like twangy guitar, mm. a lot of like bow, bow. Bow, 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 da, bow, bow, wow. Da, da, da. That is – that's some like country western that was stuff tough. going on. Yeah. And yeah. That was great. I mean your performance right there. Which, uh, which song was that? Da, 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 da. I can't remember what song it is, but that, I think that's on Shoots Too Narrow. And on, um, on uh, Painting a Hole, uh, it's in it's, – it's not like – in this key, but it has a lot of sounds from a, a scale that's called the Phrygian scale, mm -hmm. which is a, a minor scale. Do, re, me, fa, sol, le, te, do. But instead of re, it's ra. It's lower to half step, so it's do, ra, me, fa, sol, le, te, do, do, te, le, so, fa, me, ra, do. Is like ra, same, do. Is it the same scale uh, that? We heard in uh, totally Black butchered Star? that, but in Black Star, yes, it is. Yeah. I'm a Black Star. Um, it's like da 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 da. That right. really eerie um, chord that kept popping in there. That's called a Neapolitan chord. Um, yeah, I was about that, to ask you what Neapolitan meant. Why yep. is that? It's uh, there's a lot of fancy names in music theory for everything, just because it's easier to say that than to say, in a major or minor key, instead of the two chord being minor or half diminished, it's major. So it's like the one chord and the two chord are both major. Typically, two is a minor chord. So like when you're listening to a song and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's in, uh, hey, this song's in C major, da da da, and now it goes to, um. A minor, right? That's a common, you know, sound. But imagine if you like replace that with with a major key, and that's what happens at the end of this song. If you want an example of a Neapolitan chord, listen to the last like 20 seconds of this song. It's like dun 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 dun. dun, dun uh, painting a hole. Uh, painting painting. A hole. Dun, dun 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 dun. And I just really really like that. Um, yeah. So it uses some pretty sneaky stuff in there. It uses a lot of vocabulary from from like uh, south of the south of the border, southwestern United States kind of stuff, um, and a lot of really good Latin vibe stuff that I'd never heard before, and that's why I liked it. I don't actually even know the words that well. He goes painting a hole, da 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 da. da. <laughs> um, so that was my deal with that. Um, I told I talked a little bit about the place. Um, you know where I thought the song was, um, and I talked about the sounds in there. Now I think this is a great place to bring up, unless Thomas has found out a song that he would like to to talk about as as one of his favorites. 
Oh no, least he, he asked me about least favorite. I've already gone over my favorites. We all do mm-hmm. our. Do we all do favorite? Jonathan? We've all done favorites. Come yeah. On, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a oh, least mine, favorite. Mine was the, the fear. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I th- yeah, that was tough. I don't know. I'd say the least memorable for me was Rubber Balls, the one about relationships. But I don't know. Oh, you tried I, it, I, I like the album as a whole, so I can't really. I don't have any real gripes. But I would yeah, say that was I, the least least memorable. Yeah. I would, I would agree, because right now I don't even remember what that song sounds like. I know, and the name doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, <but> it's, it's, <laughs> the C at the end ruins it for me. So I uh, think I got that one right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think uh, so. Oh, that's the one uh, where it's like, She wore Mardi Gras beads in her hair, oh. and I just can't get her out of my bed. Yeah, that's yeah. that one, Rubber yeah, Balls. You know, that was kind of weird hearing him say, I can't weird. get her out of my bed. because Yeah, I you think can't... he's going to say, can't get her out of my head. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I can't imagine James Mercer having sex, and I just can't imagine. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, there's a superpower in this world that I possess. Where I can imagine anyone having sex. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> daughters, so we know How's that your mom probably doing? has happened, no. but it's just not probably. I don't, I don't probably. Know. I, it's it, it's strange because like he's such a you know sensitive, introspective guy, and then he has a song about just. Just fucking, just just so swinging, swinging and banging. Is, is he talking? <laughs> is it James Mercer, or is it somebody else, or is it some unnamed just situation? Yeah, you a, know what? A fellow under the effects of heartworms. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. true. Heartworms got to him, became brain worms, and he just started fucking <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, actually, Jonathan, that isn't a really interesting concept that I was thinking about a lot in this album, and in in some ways the the content of this album was almost a little bit too personal for me it was almost a little bit too um i'm james mercer this are these are the things i'm going through these are stories about me this is like like it was it was very personal in in a way that so if i think about my favorite chins album i think it's probably wincing the night away and mm. i really like wincing the night away because in that album, they discuss themes, <clears throat> they discuss ideas, and it's usually much wider than this is who I am and this is what I'm experiencing. In mm. a lot of ways, this 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 album felt like a uh, like a journal entry, you know, like it, 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 it was like a James Mercer journal entry when he was like, hey, mm-hmm. "This is when I was growing up. I was a weird kid <clears throat> and." Um, now I'm swinging and banging crazy ladies and getting drunk and kissing. <laughs> swinging and banging. Yeah. It's the new whining Oopsie. and dining. <laughs> swinging and banging. Swinging and banging. Hey, Katie. Banging. <laughs> so it's uh, not that it was a bad album, because I, I don't want to give that impression. I really liked I really liked Heartworms, and I'm glad that James Mercer is putting out a good album. I think this was better than Port of Morrow, but I think that... Yeah. In some ways, for me personally, I felt that it was a little bit too uh, James Mercer centric, and um, and not enough like how like, selfish of him. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> how dare he put out an album? How dare and, he? <laughs> and, and and like it's I the, I the totally feel side. that because like the flip totally side is true too because um, <laughs> like the the instrument and like his vocal range and all the cool mm-hmm. stuff he was doing with that album is not discredited by like the thematic choice in the songwriting it's just you know we, we have both we we have one of the most interesting sounding shins album which i also think might be less less i don't know emotionally engaging than wincing the night away or uh oh inverted world for me uh, yeah i let me – I'm going to, like, rephrase what you said in a way that, that I'm hearing it. Um, that, <laughs> let it. me substitute your reality for my reality. Oh, uh, um, what, I think the way I would think of it, because that's totally true, completely true. It's like the James Mercer album. Um, when you listen to The Win Right Away or something like that, uh, there's some really interesting uh, visuals for one really interesting sounds, interesting 
things being said, but it's kind of not actually anything like here's a poem and I'm going to sing it out like a song. It's a little more abstract. I think yeah. abstract is a word I would use to describe some of the Shin's uh, most popular songs like Phantom Limb. I'm sure that I'm sure that's about something. I'm not a big like music head, so I'm not going to find out the meaning behind every single song because I just like listening to them. It's about um, being people but I think, living in a small town who then moves to California to be more accepted. There you go. Potentially, according you know, to the I, internet. I knew that back in the day and yeah. quickly was like, oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's what <laughs> I, that's what I, I never knew that until you told me that. Yeah. By the way. Yeah, it's not – I mean not, like, not it's, just, up. it's just metaphor wrapped in metaphor wrapped in analogy. Yeah. So I prefer to have it just be like, oh, he got a sandwich and it sucked. Like it could be literally anything. You could just listen to the song and you're like, damn, this is – oh, this is fun. Like Phantom Limp, bum, bum, bum. Mm, I'm at a club. The song's <laughs> at a club. I like, you know, like, it doesn't – yeah. And this one, there is no mistaking. I mean there's no mistaking – some of these songs, <laughs> Fantasy Island, your favorite song. <laughs> I just wanted to fly to Fantasy Island. I didn't. <laughs> Ryan's like, this is too real. Yeah. Too, real. <laughs> <laughs> too real. Don't take me with you. This is not Dolly esque <laughs> enough for me. I need some melting clocks in my music. <laughs> you know, thugs, he had oh, the thugs like he had a he had an ocelot named Bobo. That he carried Aww. with him everywhere. And no also, way. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's... We're talking about James Mercer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly. Salvador I mean, Dolly. Wait, wait. Oh. He also Salvador had an Dolly. eater that he would walk around New York City. <laughs> One in each arm. That's it. Dude. That's it. An ocelot, ocelot and an anteater. Ocelot opposite of an yeah. anteater. I think it was called Bobo. You know, one of the fathers of Dadaism. So anyway, uh, continue with your rephrasing of my my thesis. That was it. Okay. That was it. Well, so my... that, made me, that made me think of a really interesting concept because we were talking about rap really briefly. And something that I really enjoy about rock music and other genres of music that I feel that rap has a really hard time doing is creating a fantasy like Fantasy Island where rap music mm -hmm. is predicated on this idea that it is real and this is a – like, this is a real depiction of what my life is, whereas rock music and most other music isn't really constrained to that. You create this fantasy that is bigger than the individual songwriter and in a lot of ways. Mm. And, I mean, rap mm. is constrained to that because you have the front man, you have the rapper, and you expect what he's saying to be about his life. But um, in a lot of ways, this is the most rap-centric album that James Mercer has ever put out. <laughs> <laughs> because it is explain. <laughs> This is this is his uh, this explain. is his mixtape that is gonna burst onto the scene and hey, get him known. You Just guys fire. were onto this. You guys were onto this. The all the electronic sounds that are being used in the album, where you guys were like, "Damn, how many people are playing this?" the The answer is like, there aren't a certain number of people playing it because there's a ton of synth going on. I really liked. Was it you, Thomas? You, David? That said, how would they perform this? David. Right. It was David. Yeah. Thanks for pointing to to him on your screen, Ryan. That really helped. Thank you. <laughs> oh, him? Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> that, uh, that was one of the reasons why I pointed out why this is a lot like Broken Bells, where two dudes, James Mercer, Brian Burton, um, make the music, right? And it did, and they, they, you can pick what you want to do nowadays. Uh, you can just like grab a, a MacBook Air refurbished model for eight forty nine, I might add, plus tax. Apple Care is available, <clears throat> and uh, you can just gr grab GarageBand and, and do that kind of stuff. But the, it, anywho, um, cycling back, cycling back. What were you saying, Ryan? Man, I was talking about rap. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Let's oh yeah, that's right. So I I had I had thought of it. I was like, oh yeah. There is some similarity sonically too, like sound wise. Uh, like the, there's some, there's a little bit of drum machine, like painting a hole. Dun, mm. da, dun, dun, mm. dun. And it's not, it's not unheard of for the shins, but there was a lot of embracing of like electronic music. Yeah. Electronic yeah. music. And that's kind of what rap, you know, that's what rap is right now. 
pretty much. <clears throat> um, I stepped there out. Definitely is. I, I just say. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I'm passing it. I'm well, passing then it. I, I am the alpha, so I guess so. <laughs> um, you looped up? <laughs> I was gonna say it's, uh, <laughs> you gotta you do have a pretty beta internet connection today, so I don't know. If, oh yeah, I'm gonna take that claim. Woo. You're the new John. Uh, <laughs> You're the new George. <laughs> You're the new Nate. Oh, yeah, new Nate. 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 We never did our bashing of Nate. Not, let's not go yeah, that right, far. No one, bash, no one's right? Nate. Still the only <laughs> <Yeah>. Nate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we've been we've been talking about the album for a while. Let's bash Nate for a bit. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Wait, Ryan, why don't you start off the Nate bash? All right. So, <laughs> Nate Sand is the shadiest nice guy I've ever met. I I have <laughs> never experienced someone who is such a sweetheart who is so shady in his excuses for not showing up. Like, <laughs> so he's an English major and he should know why he shouldn't be using a passive form as an excuse. I didn't know that I am going to be yeah. taken away on a trip with my family this morning. <laughs> so leave leave the terrible do, accent to me. <laughs> Man, Pretty much. dude is 23 years old. If he didn't want to go traveling with his parents this morning, he didn't have to. What the fuck is he doing? There's some shit Bitch. going on. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know... <clears throat> English majors have like two classes a week, but then they try and make you feel like their life is so hard for finals. They're like, I have to write 30 pages for finals. No, right? <laughs> oh, wait. So, oh, wait. Not hard. 20 months? Oh, you had four months to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, and Nate's just doing it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hear Nate. I've heard that Nate makes a really terrible potato salad. <laughs> really bad. Is getting personal. A really bad what? Potato salad. <laughs> oh. Potato. Potato I don't know, salad. He's, he's pretty white. I I feel like he'd be pretty good at that. <laughs> Have you met Nate in person? <laughs> no. Am I real? <laughs> I, no? <laughs> okay. Nate is not no, real. No, you're part of my imagination. Actually, all of you are part of my imagination. Actually, speaking of real. Jonathan, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a moving <laughs> image of Thomas, or has every time you've spoken to Thomas just been his like profile oh, sitting on a? Always. Oh, oh. <laughs> Y'all people ain't even read. Just a voice. So, Thomas, where's your where's your Nate bash? <laughs> the, the nose <laughs> <fruit>. <laughs> 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 Please tell me that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> that, 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 that was, yep. It sounded like you went you you went to Guatemala and you purchased a wooden flute and you came back and you went up to your microphone on your laptop and just went. Ah! <laughs> Woo! Uh, oh, wait, was, was okay, that a nose we should. All right. Was that a nose we flute? should get to raise yeah. the album. Yeah, I just blew a nose flute really hard. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Bro. Uh, Nate, Nate <laughs> is a pretty accomplished nose flautist, so I think. Oh, so that was a huge bash. Yeah, it's, it's huge. He, he's oh, gonna yeah. get it. He, oh, yeah. he gets it. He speaks huge that bash. grammar. He, he gets it. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, I think we can conclude this session of of shitting on Nate, <laughs> Requiem, yeah, 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 yeah. Impace, yeah. uh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Sanctus Benedictus. What is what is your guys's rating of heartworms? Mm. 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 Yeah. Now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pick uh we're gonna have to pick what we're gonna be rating this with. I think we freestyle. We yeah, freestyle. Everybody, everybody everybody's different. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh Ryan, you go first. I give heartworms three point seven five don't look super over there. Supermassive black <laughs> holes. Out of, <laughs> out of four supermassive yes. black holes. Um, yep. It was it was really cool. I had a lot of fun listening to this album. It's it's a blast. Um, it maybe isn't as as hearty of a Shins album as some of some of the others, but it's a lot of fun. It's 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 some Shins junk food, and I'll mm-hmm. keep going back <laughs> to this. All right. Um, Thomas, you're up. Oh man, 
I would have to give this one uh, four wriggly ass worms out of five. Ooh, and, wriggly uh, ass worms. <laughs> wriggly ass worms. Yes. Hey, when and, I get uh, many wriggly just, ass worms. Okay. Alpha. <laughs> just gotta say when. Whenever James Mercer puts out music, I can intake that shit for hours. Can't wait mm. until I get to see this in some live fashion because I love uh, Shins and Broken Bells. Any of their uh, live or studio performances are amazing and mm. always slightly different from the album version, so that's always cool to see. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this album. I guess compared to the other Shins albums, I agree with Ryan. It was very personal, but it didn't really deter me at all. I really enjoyed it. It's just another aspect of uh, their evolving musical fashions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. James Mercer's. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. David. <laughs> Next. Okay. <laughs> um, first, quick shout out to a podcast called. Um, like on the Sunday Wiggly school dropouts, words. only because their method of rating things, they rate books of the Bible and they use arbitrary units and arbitrary scales. <laughs> I rate this As they an do. 11 out of 13, the Jesus and Mary chain tapes handed to me <laughs> by an elementary <laughs> school student. <laughs> um, because I thought it was definitely the shins. I loved it. Because they do great stuff, and this continues it. And I also really loved kind of the production shift, how they decided to use a lot of different instruments and things that I wouldn't necessarily expect to kind of piece together some really great songs that hold themselves together in a way that's different than what you usually see, which is usually a continuation of instruments and riffs and things like that. But they mixed it up a lot, and I loved it. Hmm. Mhm. All right. Something new, learning something different about your favorite, you know, one of your favorites, that's always good. Okay. Yes. I'm going to give I'm going to give this album. This art it already has it. It took it from me. 85 painted holes out of 95 painted holes. And those oh, 10 shit. painted holes uh sitting in a warehouse somewhere are um <laughs> Our, our, our how, how, does a, how does a hole sit in a warehouse? Shut up, Dave! <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it's a hole. In, okay, it, those ten painted holes in some gay bar. Uh, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That's now, where you, given the context <laughs> of things that people will not hear. 85 out of 95. And 85 those other glory holes out of 95 glory holes. <laughs> basically. Paint oh, holes, man. Uh, were just because of some... Um, a little bit of uh, stagnation that happened in a few of the tracks, like Rubber Balls, um, where I felt less connected uh, to what was going on sonically. There was a little bit less interest, but I absolutely dug it. There's so much cool new stuff um, that happened in this album, and it's still the shins. You know, It's still James Mercer, and I agree with – Thomas, you said this, or David, you said this? David. I don't know. You just pick pictures on my screen. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for pointing uh, on your a screen. Beautiful voice. Um, I could just – I could intake that shit all day. I think the words you used were – I think James that was Mercer, Thomas, actually. Yeah, I put, did. If James Mercer yeah. puts it out, I could intake it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag alpha. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Digital North. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to check us out at CuriousMagnet.com to listen to all of our episodes as well as the rest of our content. You can follow our Facebook page at The Curious Magnet to receive notifications when new episodes of The Digital North and the rest of our work come out. Thanks again. Stay curious.